All right, here's our first multiple choice question after we've looked at some binomials. So a random sample of 15 people is taken from a population in which 40% favor a particular political stand. What is the probability that exactly six individuals in the sample favor this political stand? All right, so with all of this, it's always what is the variable, right? What are we keeping track of here? And the variable is usually hidden somewhere in this last sentence, which happens to be a question, right? You see probability and you see exactly six, but you see favor this political stand, right? There's my variable, right? If we're gonna talk to 15 people, how many of these people favor this political stand? So my variable for this problem, x, is the number of people in my SRS or my random sample of 15 that favor this political stand. Okay, so when we think about this, the number of people, that's definitely numerical, alright? I would, I would count that variable, I would not measure that variable, so we have a discrete random variable, which means I either got to make a table because one wasn't given to me, or maybe it's binomial. So I think we usually just go towards the table aspect. And let's think about what that table would look like, okay? So how you would always figure out your table is your top row has to be your sample space. Okay, so what are the possible values of x? Well, if I'm talking about x, right, the number of people out of these 15 that favor it, x could be 0, or 1, or 2 or three, all the way up to 15. So if you were thinking, hey, I need to make a table, brace yourself, because you're gonna have to make a really large table. So your table, if I was gonna draw it in here, and I, I'm not gonna draw the whole thing. So your table, the top row, would have your sample space, which would be from 0 to 15, right? And that is a 16, that's 16 options there, plus you got your, your label column. So that's a 17-columned table. That's a lot. And then imagine, if you wanted to start doing this, you'd have to start making a tree diagram. Like the first person could favor the political stand or not, right? So we'd have 40 against 60. And then you'd have to go out for the second person, and then the third, and then the fourth, and then the fifth. Right? That's a massive tree diagram. And this is a massive table. So when it comes to something like that, right, you feel like, would she really ask me to make a table that large? Probably not. It means we're probably binomial. But we gotta check that we're binomial so that we can make sure we're using those rules properly. So let's figure this out. Do I have a fixed number of trials? Sure do. Yeah. I've got 15 folks I'm gonna talk to, okay? is there something I can call a success. And according to how this, this, word, this problem is set up, yeah, favoring this political stand is viewed as a success. So I'll put success here. Okay. All right. Three, are the trials independent? Well, let's think about this. I'm taking a random sample of people from a population. So if this is random, would, the, would one person's opinion on this political stand have any bearing on the next person's opinion of that political stand? And, and it should be no. If this is random, then these folks probably don't know each other, right? So one person's opinion won't affect the other person's opinion, right? There's no bias there. So I'm gonna make the assumption that these are independent, okay? And then the last thing is, do I have a probability of success? It said, yeah, if you go talk to anybody, there's about a 40% chance 
they're going to favor this political stand. So you see I get through all four of those check marks and that's great because then I know my variable, instead of making this table, I can just write the squiggles, right? It's distributed binomially. We've got 15 folks and 17, not 17, excuse me, 47 per, I can't even use my words. It's a 40% chance of success. I think I was using the S letter from success and putting a 17 there. My brain got a little mixed. Okay, so we got that. All right. Now, this is what's the probability that exactly six, all right? So I hear probability, all right? And I need something in the parentheses. Exactly six means x equals six, which is why I put this, this table here with the six. We basically want this number. If I could figure out that number, it's one of these four, right? It's the answer to my question. So let's see if we can figure this out. So if we're going through this, let's start to, work this table, right? So I know I'm in the binomial column. I've proven it's binomial. The question in front of me is how to calculate a probability. So I'm over in this cell somewhere. Now I have an equal sign inside that parentheses, so I need to use binomial PDF here. So let's go use binomial PDF. And then you need to give your calculator three pieces of information. All right, you need to give it your sample size, or I shouldn't say your sample size always, but the number of trials, your probability of success, and then out of those trials, how many successes do you want? Six. Okay. So let's all take a look at this. Let me clear that out. We're gonna go binomial PDF, 15.7 and then six. And we're getting about 0 0.0115 and then what did I, oh gosh, I did this again. I think I'm thinking 70% because that was the problem before. I, I'm seeing my error. All right, let me, let me redo this. If you're thinking I'm crazy while you're watching the video, you're not wrong, but I need to put 0.4, okay? Because that was actually the probability of success. So let me rerun this and not mix these problems up. All right, so now we have about 21%. So two O, oh, and if we're going four decimals, it looks like, 2066. So we got 0 0.2066, and there we go, part C. Okay. All right, so in the next example, we're gonna revisit that coin flipping problem we had to start us off with binomials. All right, see you in a few, bye.